I'm going to take it back to something that you have often referred to as the genius zone, how to stay within your genius zone while also being able to expand your business. Because I think that that's one thing when people hear you talk about, well, what you got to do is say all this 80% of stuff that isn't within your genius zone, just stop doing it. Well, if I stop doing that, how do I grow my business if I'm only limited to my genius zone? So um, I, behind the scenes, have watched you do this, but I want to know your thoughts on it for the people out there that are like, well, how do I how do I continue to grow if I'm limited to my genius zone? I totally hear what you're saying. And, and this, this is the question that comes up often when I talk about doing the genius zone thing. It is a little bit of a balancing act, but it's, it's leveraged and intentional evolution of what you do and for whom. There's a plan that goes into place to be able to do this. Um, and the short version is, is first, it, it's identifying what you do love to do versus the shit that you think you're required to do in your given skill set. And then narrowing that down to what are the actual requirements and then narrowing down those requirements to if I could only do this one thing or this one plus this on occasion, what would that be and what would that look like? And then it's identifying the people in your marketplace that that's a way better fit for. A lot of us, a lot of us in, in my world and the people that I work with, a lot of us are actually very well educated in our craft to the point where we're basically like neuroscientist doctors, like we're brain surgeons but we keep playing the role of general practitioner doctor because we think we either have to or we don't know that there's a different who in our world that would pay us for that specialized thing that we can do. Being willing and able to say no and being in a position financially and responsibility-wise that you can tell certain projects, no, thank you. That's not for me. I no longer do that, right? Um, I think a lot of us, and what I've noticed, maybe this isn't everybody that's listening or everybody that's in the industry, but what I've experienced for myself and what I've noticed in other people is that we do pretty good and our world catches up to that to match the income, right? We do a little bit better and the world catches up to match that new revenue. And pretty soon we're like, okay, oh my God, I'm buried. I'm doing as much as I possibly can. And now I can't take my foot off the gas. That's a really tough place to be in. Most of us are there now. Some of us have been through that cycle a few times and you just got to outthink your current situation, which is hard because most of us are in the current situation that we're in because of the thinking that we used to get there and what got you here won't get you there. And really, it comes down to identifying, okay, cool, what is the highest leveraged thing I can do for a client or for myself? And how do I spend a little extra time on the evening or on the weekend doing that so I can outrun my current outgo enough to where I can take my foot off the gas a little bit during the quote-unquote work week? Hey.